What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is Kevin with Optimized Essentials. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about NoFap, okay? November is right around the corner and it is 2022. And I wanna invite you all to do the NoFap November Challenge. Now, if you're watching this in the future, maybe past November, a week or two or longer into November, and you've already given in, then start where you're at, right? It doesn't have to be November 1st. I'm only filming this on October 31st, Halloween. Uh, and I'm trying to upload this before November to get all the people who follow me on YouTube, on my social media to start this process, okay? Now, before I even wanna begin with NoFap and no November, the NoFap November, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about where I've been, you know, what I've been doing, what I've been up to for any of you guys who care and for any of you guys who are new. And then I'm gonna also talk about some stuff that I've learned throughout my NoFap journey and give you some pro tips on how to succeed on NoFap because NoFap is definitely a very powerful tool, but not everyone can do it, right? Some people will try and get on it. They'll succeed for maybe seven days, 14 days, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, one month, and then they go back to the habit. Now, this year too, I kind of let myself go a little bit consciously. So I'm gonna give you a quick update on what I mean by that. So if you haven't, if you don't know and you don't really know who I am, I've been doing NoFap semen retention these past four or five years for a good amount of time, meaning my first streak of semen retention was 11 months, my second one was 13 months, and my third one was also 11 months, which was my most recent one. And I ended that streak of November, around November this time of last year, of 2021. And I stopped doing no fat for prolonged, like long periods at a time because I've already kind of, in a, in a sense, achieved success on NoFap. So I wanted to experience what it was like. But before I go with that far, I want to backtrack a little bit. So around this time last year, at my 11th month streak, I was working on a female friend, all right? Now, she was not by any means uh, the type of girl I'm into, but I could definitely tell that she was into me, right? And it was a very strong, less lustful desire that I can feel. And it almost, as I was working on it, because I do body work, I don't know if you guys can see my table here. This is actually my new setup, my new office and stuff. I'll give you guys some updates on that as well. And then I'll tie this all into you guys, right? So as I was working on her on the table, like I could feel the, the, the lustful desire that she had towards me, right? And even though I wasn't really attracted to her, I was kind of turned on by like the feminine energy that she was bringing to the table, right? I saw her more as a friend and not necessarily a sexual uh, partner because I would feel like I'd lower my standard to be with her or to, to you know, have sex with her. And I wasn't even attracted to her in that way. She wasn't even that attractive in that sense, right? She carried some like dark energy that kind of long story short, rubbed off on me. So for the next two to three days, I felt insanely horny, right? Insanely horny. And also, I want you guys to know, so around this time, November 2021, I was also going to go into ayahuasca again the month uh, after that. So within that period of time, I gave myself, after I worked on her, I had this insatiable sexual energy desire that was lodged in my uh, genitals or like my sacral chakra if you're into the spiritual energetic stuff and I could not get rid of it right all the breathing transmutation stuff I could not get rid of so I gave myself two days three days I think it was three days to be exact to uh, sit with it meaning like I did not want to give in but I was like okay I'm going to give this a little bit more time because this feels like something I haven't felt before so long story short by the third day I was still feeling intense sexual desire, meaning my energy was stuck there and there was no amount of transmutation that I could do to reroute that sexual energy. So again, long story short, I don't want to rant too much unless you guys are enjoying this. I decided to end my streak. 11 months, poof, ended it, right? I did watch porn and I did beat my meat and I was more than happy to consciously end my streak. Now from Last year of this time to now, so November 21, 2021 to November 2022, I had intermittent periods of no fat, meaning I didn't do long streaks. I 
did like one month after that. I waited one month when I was at uh, my ayahuasca. I finished my ayahuasca, ayahuasca ceremony. And ironically enough, I felt like my, all my chakras are clean and I reset my nervous system in a way. And I, when I experienced sexual urges after my ceremony, I didn't bother transmuting it. I didn't bother like trying to like, okay, I'm not going to give into this. I was like, oh, I feel sexual energy. I feel sexual desire. I'm just going to give in, right? I was at a transition period in my life. And I was okay with that because I've done NoFap and semen retention for so long. I kind of want to experience what it's like on the opposite side of the spectrum. So the beginning of this year, 2022, uh, I would also have like intermittent one months. And then I would go back to uh, watching porn, playing with myself. And then I remember I would do it uh, for two months and then I'd uh, you know, go back to the cycle. And then I would do it once every few weeks and then once every two weeks, once every week. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'm got, this is kind of getting, this is kind of like I'm picking up, right? So around the halfway point of last year, so the summer of this year, or not last year, summer of this year, so halfway into this streak of letting myself get back into this, this activity, right? Around summer, I did like a two month streak again. So like from like May to August, I didn't really watch porn and really didn't do any no fap or I didn't really fap. I just did no fap and semen retention. And then after that, it would be like one month and then I would go back to like a few weeks, one week, and then I would notice my cycle. Like I would notice that I was, now I'm getting into a slippery slope, slope because I got in the habit of giving into my sexual, my sexual desire without uh, consciously trying to transmute it or at least resisting it from the beginning. And because I let like six to eight months, almost a year go by where I just gave into my sexual desire when it was really strong and not bothering transmuting it, I eventually found myself getting into a slippery stump, meaning I started to do it more often. Like in a week, I would maybe do it like two or three times, which is a lot for me, right? Because I'm from someone who used to go from no no fat for a month, a uh, year long, to someone who uh, does it a few times a week, that's a lot. But I wanted to experience it. I wanted to see, okay, what is going on? It was like an experiment. I was like being a therapist, a, psycho th a psychoanalyst. I was analyzing, okay, what is going on? Why am I succumbing to my temptations? And why am I having such trouble transmuting my sexual energy? And I wanted to also figure out what will it take for me to get back on track? And now I am back on track. So I want to share this video with you guys to really help you with what it takes to reclaim your power as a man and to stop giving into sexual uh, desire and temptation and lust. Okay, now it's not easy, but I wanted to figure out what did it take in order for me to snap out of the cycle and to get back on track of no fab and semen retention, okay? And I'm gonna give you what my uh, what my finding was, but let me finish the story, right? So, towards the tail end of this of this uh, conscious relapse, or I don't want to say relapse because I wasn't addicted, right? And I never really had a problem with porn. It's just something you enjoy doing, and it's like so strong and powerful that you just want to repeat it, right? It's a pleasurable act. So towards the tail end of this, so like around after August, so really recent actually, September, October, I was like, okay, I'm, it, it, it's not affecting me because I, I wanted to test out how does this affect my strength at the gym, okay? So it does not affect your strength at the gym, or at least for me, because I was eating well, I was sleeping, I was lifting heavy weights. But what I did notice was when I started doing it more often, my magnetism wasn't there. I felt like my energy wasn't as grounded, right? When I worked out at the gym and I did my breathing exercises and I'm like in the zone, the, even if I do no fat for one month or a few weeks to one month, the type of energy level, groundedness and physical prowess that I would feel like at the lower portions of my being, my root, root chakra and my sacral chakra, like my lower energy centers, it felt like it was very solid and grounded down there. But when I started to do it more often, meaning I would let three days pass and then I would decide to bust a nut, that's what I noticed. Okay, when I'm at the gym, I can't, I can't concentrate my energies, right? Because before when I was on OFAP, I could do my deep breathing exercises at the gym, which I love doing, gets me in like a peak state, and I could ground my energy and I can have a very strong 
magnetic force field, right? But when I did when I did a fap and when I did bust my nut, I would notice that I didn't have this power anymore. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna wrap the story up because it's gonna be it's gonna get way too long. Uh, needless to say, to say at the end of August, not end of August, end of, end of September, I was like, okay, I'm gonna make sure I don't do this. Uh, I don't, I don't, I stop, right? I'm, I'm gonna make sure I go back, get back on NoFap. I'm gonna make sure I succeed this time. I'm gonna record how exactly I did it. So at the time of making this video, around the end of September, I forgot which day, but it was the end of September till now, uh, October 31st, it's been a month. And I've had some powerful sexual desires these last week or two, but I I made sure that I'm not gonna succumb to the temptation because why? I've done it before. I know that I can. And I know what it took or what it takes to get over that hump. And I'm going to share these insights with you so that you can succeed on NoFap as well. Okay, so I have some notes down. I kind of forgot all the bullet points that I wanted to share, but here we go. So the first thing that I shared with you was some updates with where I've been, how I kind of let myself go a little bit, how I kind of consciously went back into busting nuts, which was actually very fun and pleasurable. And I don't regret any of it at all. Uh, only towards the end did I actually have some like, okay, I got to stop and I couldn't. I was like, fuck, what is going on? It's because you've done something for so long. The, the habit, the pattern is repeated for so long that it is very difficult to snap out of it, okay? Now, the second thing I want to talk to you guys about is this, is sexual energy, right? Sexual desire, lust, as Napoleon Hill has put it, is the most strongest force of human nature, meaning it causes men to do things to compel them towards taking action or to behave in ways that they wouldn't otherwise would, right? And this is because it's such a primal desire. But us as conscious beings, right, spiritual conscious beings, we have the power to harness this energy or to iron will and resist it, right? We can override our, our lower primal desires if we are conscious enough, okay? Now, since I'm already one month, which is not too much, and I feel like I've successfully gone over the hardest hump, I wanna let you guys know that the hardest part of NoFap is probably gonna be the first few weeks, first month, maybe two months. The, all the times that I've done it, I do remember that the first two months are the hardest, right? If you've been in the cycle of fapping and watching porn, and you would truly enjoy it and you don't see much downsides to it, then it's gonna be very hard to break. But once you start seeing the downsides to it, once you start seeing that you don't have as much power as a man, you don't have as much confidence, you don't have as much uh, energetic presence, and you realize there's actually a lot of detriment and pain involved when you constantly masturbate and blow your blow your nut and bust, uh, bust your nut and blow your seed, then you'll start to it'll start to be easier for you to want to stop, right? Just like the fat person, if he's out of shape and he's he's noticing a health defect or a health problem, eventually it's going to be painful enough for him where he's going to stop. For me, I was getting to that point. I wasn't there yet, but it was starting. It was starting to tip, right? It started to be okay. I'm having fun, uh, having fun with swinging the opposite side of the spectrum and self-pleasure, but now I'm entering a slippery slope where it's gonna be very easy to repeat this habit over and over again and not be rewarded for it, okay? So once I realized I'm entering a slippery slope, I was like, okay, I gotta stop this and I gotta figure out how I can get back on track and I gotta teach other men how to do it, right? And the very first thing I realized is I need to have a compelling reason to do this, right? The reason why I was able to do NoFap and seam retention for so long in the past was because I realized one, it makes you more attractive. Two, it makes you more confident and it can get you girls. I was like, what? I want to get a girlfriend and NoFap does get you a girlfriend. Okay. At least it did for me. When I did NoFap and seam retention uh, the first few times as a novice and I did it for like two months long, I attracted my first girlfriend, right? I was a personal trainer, 21, 22 I think it was 20, yeah, 22 or 23, one of those ages, 21 to 23. And I, when I first did NoFap, I'm 26 now for you guys who are curious, I did NoFap for two months, seam retention, and I attracted a girlfriend. So that was a very strong motivational factor. When you realize if you're a virgin or if you're someone who hasn't had sex in a while, that reclaiming your power by not busting a nut and holding that energy 
can attract you a real girlfriend to have sex with, that right there is a strong enough motivational force to prevent you from jumping back into the cycle, right? For me, it's not about getting girls anymore, right? Although that would be nice to have a 10 out of 10 by your side, my main focus right now is to excel in my business, okay? One, being a body work, and number two, my online stuff. I wanna get back to creating videos, I wanna get back to making programs, and I want this way more than I wanna bust a nut, right? I want this way more than I wanna have sex with random girls. Now, don't get me wrong, if there is the right girl in front of me and, it, and I'm attracted to her enough, I'm gonna, I'm gonna approach her and I'm gonna try and get something going. But there's a funny thing happening in the universe, at least for me, where it's like, God has a way of like blocking, putting roadblocks in front of you or like turning things down when it's not in your best interest. So there, there were many times where I was generally DTF when I found a girl, but for some odd reason, right, it, it just never worked out, right? It just never worked out because I feel that my higher purpose, God or higher self, whatever, is not allowing me to have these encounters with females because I have something more important to do with my life. I have something more meaningful and purposeful that I need to focus on. So there's like some metaphysical force happening that is blocking me or not allowing me to have successful interactions with girls. And that's another rabbit hole or rant on its own. But needless to say, needless to say my main driving force, my main desire and reason for getting back onto no fat and semen retention is to succeed at my businesses, right? Not business, businesses. I wanna get better at my craft, body work, fixing people's pain and posture, and I wanna make a fuck ton of money selling programs, selling courses online, which, quick plug, if you guys wanna learn about no, uh, no fab, semen retention, sexual transmutation, I do have a program on that. The free version teaches you about uh, the the basics, the fundamentals of how to tr what how what what trans sexual transmutation is how to not how to do it what it is and the mechanics behind it and then number two the free the paid version where you do have to invest some money because I spent like a long time trying to learn this shit right this is the version where I teach how to actually do it right the nutritional protocol uh, some health principles and basically breathing and some really good stuff on how to transmute your sexual energy and emanate and attract people, okay? It's called sexual manifestation. Make sure you guys check those stuff out. At least get the free version. I will try and sell you at the end, but if you don't, you'll still get a lot of value from that. So with that shameless plug out of the way, where am I at in terms of this, okay? So what, what more do I wanna share with you guys? Why, do I, why did I title this Reclaim Your Power? Because, because, no fap, right? Your sexual energy, your jing, your, your chi, right? Your most precious form of life force. This is what makes you human and most importantly, a man. If you keep losing it, if you keep busting your nut, you're not gonna have that raw primal energy that makes people fear you as a man. People won't sense that presence that you have. And when you start to stop, right? When you start to stop fapping, when you start to stop or when you stop busting a nut and you engage in this practice of semen intention, what ends up happening is you now have more power in your lower chakras, your energy centers, your sacral chakra, your root chakra, and you're more grounded and powerful as a man. And people can sense, feel, and smell this. But this is not enough. You do need to pair it with good lifestyle choices. More importantly, resistance training, nutrition, sleeping, the whole spiel, which is what is covered in my program. But I don't want to get too deep into that. There were some things I want to talk to you guys about uh, before I forget. Okay, why a lot of people fail on NoFap, okay? Most people can't get on semen retention NoFap and do it, do it for a prolonged period because of this one reason, okay? They do not have a compelling reason or purpose to, to stay on and succeed on NoFap. Again... Napoleon Hill talks about sexual desire, right? Being the strongest motivating force for men. It compels them to take action. And if you don't know how to harness this force because you don't have other things going on in your life that you can transmute your energy to, meaning you don't have something else you want more than sex, which is like, what? 
more than sex or you don't have something that you can turn that desire of sex and chasing women and gratifying yourself through porn, you don't have that to transmute into something, aka your purpose, you don't have a strong, compelling reason, a burning desire aside from getting women. That could be it too. You could do no fat and semen retention for the purpose of getting women. Then you can transmute that into that purpose, right? But what I'm trying to say here is this. Most people don't have a strong enough, compelling enough reason for them to engage in no fat. If they don't have anything going on in their life, they're back home after their nine to five, no friends or poor social life, playing video games, eating junk food, what else are they gonna do to fill themselves up? They're gonna be like, ooh, it's like a form of self-love. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go touch myself for an hour. I'm gonna watch my favorite porn stars or multiple porn stars and just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And that's what I realized too when I was on these like apps or like these sites, right? Found myself like, okay, I, I need to finish to the right person. I gotta find the right girl. You know, you gotta like, I was, I'm like, okay. As, as pleasurable as this is, this is get, becoming a problem, right? And you have to realize, what are you giving up when you are engaging in this? Meaning, what is your opportunity cost? You are giving up your time and you're not getting much in return other than pleasure, right? And one of the other things I wanna talk about is do not reward yourself until you've earned it, right? This is something Liver King has also talked about. Don't reward yourself when you haven't fucking earned it. Because if you just stimulate yourself and you pump out dopamine, then you are hacking your system by giving yourself pleasure when you haven't put in the work. The reason why working out for me feels so good, right? Disciplining myself feels so good is because I get a reward afterwards. And that is the reward of I put in hard work, physical lifting weights, I put on muscle, I look good, people respond to me better, dopamine, right? I put in the work first, and then I get the dopamine later. I discipline myself with no fat, semen retention, I get the reward later. I discipline myself with eating good, I have some abs, you know, you could, you know, see my abs, I'm getting cut, dopamine, right? But what a lot of people are doing is no work, no work, no work, dopamine. No work, no work, no work, dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. So they're not working for the rewards. They're just rewarding themselves without it and they're depleting themselves. Literally, you're depleting yourself down below by constantly busting a nut. You're depleting yourself by eating a bunch of shitty food. You're depleting yourself by having a bunch of negative emotions, how you're not worthy, how you suck, how you're weak, how you're not the man you know you could be. All these negative emotions are causing you to deplete yourself, right? And the reason why NoFap will help you reclaim your power is because you are plugging the biggest leak in your life, and that is wasting your semen, right? When you plug that leak, because you have something more that you want, something better that you want, a lifestyle change, right? a personality upgrade, you wanna unlock your potential as a man, when you have something that you can funnel that energy into, now you can reclaim your power as a man, okay? That's pretty much, what it is, right? Reclaiming your power as a man is to stop engaging in things that take your power away. This could be junk food. This could be excessively playing video games. I still play video games every now and then. But anything that you do excessively that is depleting you and not giving you a return on energy invested, that is what I call an energy vampire. And it's taking from you more than it's giving back. Anything that's taking more from you than it is giving back, like watching porn and fapping off and busting a nut, is going to cause you to have negative emotions, negative sensations within your body, which then perpetuates the loop. And to reclaim your power is to stop all of that, okay? Now again, the reason why most people can't do it is because I've made a video on it in the past, they're unfulfilled. They have unmet emotional needs, their trauma, their, there's like hidden trauma from the past that they have not addressed. And then there's also, environmental factors, you know, working in a job that you hate, being surrounded by family that you don't get along with, not having friends, family, etc., right? That is influencing your behavior to self-gratify yourself, to, you know, to feed yourself shitty food, to constantly watch porn because that's your way of making yourself feel better without realizing that it's actually making you feel worse. You probably already realize it's making you feel worse. So, guess what? The flip side of this coin is you do things intentionally that make you feel good, right? Cheap pleasures cost a lot. 
and things that you discipline yourself, which feels like it costs a lot, is what will actually give you the most pleasure, right? I call it short-term pain, long-term gain, right? Some people are looking for short-term pleasure, but they're getting long-term loss, right? Anytime you pleasure yourself in the moment, right, short-term, you're going to experience pain in the long run. Anytime you engage in discipline and pain now, you're going to experience the pleasure in the long run. So it's about flipping the equation and figuring out how you can do that. And one of the ways you can do it is to have a strong, compelling reason. And it could be as simple as, if I do no fab, if I do semen retention for 30 days or 60 days, I'm going to get a girlfriend, right? You may not, but if that is your driving force, which was mine, you're going to transmute that desire, that strong desire to have sex or to watch a pornography online and bust a nut into the desire of actually getting a female to have sex with. That would be a good start to figuring out how semen retention works and sexual transmutation works. But if you're like me, you'll soon realize that once you find a girl to have sex with, you're just using her to masturbate, basically, essentially. And if you don't actually have a genuine, strong connection with her, then you'll realize the same thing of watching porn. You're wasting your energy. You're still unfulfilled because you don't have a purpose in your life. As a man, you need work. You need discipline. You need purpose. You need something that will sharpen your tool. And if you don't have that, guess what? You're going to feel lack. You're going to feel like your needs aren't being met. You're going to feel the deepest core of yourself as empty or unfulfilled, right? And that's because you don't have a purpose. To truly be successful in semen retention, no fat, in my experience, is to have a strong, compelling reason known as your purpose, right? For me, I want to get back to making videos. I want to lead by example and show you guys this is what is possible if you harness your sexual energy and you redirect it towards chasing something that actually matters, not females, chasing success in your business, right? Chasing success or greatness in your personality, in your characteristics, in your potential as a man. These are noteworthy achievements. These are noteworthy ideals, for me at least. These are virtues that I want to pursue and not spend all of my precious energy, my precious sexual energy to chasing females, right? That is something I don't get much energy return on. When I achieve success, when I make a lot of money, when I have a, an empire, when I have a very highly developed skill set that not many people have, people are going to want to spend time with you. People are going to want to be with you. Girls are want to have sex with you. They're going to come to you because you have such a come to you. <laughs> They're going to have, you're going to have such a magnetic pull because you have such value as a human being and such presence and potency as a man that people cannot help but look at you, surround, your, surround themselves with you. Because you are the pinnacle of what it means to be a man, okay? Now, I shared all the things that I wanted to share. So if there's any questions that you guys have and you're curious to know about your uh, the success, how to succeed on NoFap, or you want to share your success about NoFap and semen retention, or there's anything you want to share, drop the comments down below, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. All this is gonna help boost the algorithm, which will definitely help support me in growing my channel. And if you wanna, again, support me and this channel, get my programs and just watch all my videos, like them up. Have a good one, peace.